Just checking a little something on my notes here. All right, looks like we're all set. So welcome everybody to Stoned History number two, right here on Indoor Smokers. But you know where you're at. At least hopefully you do. Cause I ain't sure, man. All right, it's late. Like after midnight, at least late. And then I was just downstairs watching TV, even smoking fucking hella weed since I got done with work today, like around seven o'clock. So I just thought, man, I got all the prerequisites to do a fucking stoned history. Let's get up there and do one. So today we are going to do a request I had from one of our friends across the pond who wanted to know more about the Civil War. So the Civil War is immensely fascinating. Tons of just great detailed stories in there with different battles and things going on. What I'm going to try to do with you guys on this, like we did with the World War II, is basically give a general overview of the entire Civil War in just one lecture slash video here. So it's not going to be super detailed, but I think it'll give you a pretty good understanding of what happened in this five-year period. Later, we can come back and do specific battles and things like Gettysburg, Antietam, and then we can really get more into the meat. So the Civil War lasted from 1860 to 1860. Now the first thing you got to know for those people who are not familiar at all with what happened in the Civil War, it was a war between the North and South United States. When I was a little kid I used to think that it was North America versus South America like this. So then I found out it was actually just a war between this one little part of North America and I was like what that's all? But of course it was a fucking major event. A huge, serious war. This was a brutal, no holds bar, total warfare. You were talking about nearly half a million Americans dying in this war, in this five year period. More Americans died in the Civil War than in all other wars we have fought in combined. And yes, you heard me right, and that's not per capita. That is total numbers. So, one of the things you got to know before we get right into the war is the state of things in the country at that time. The tensions were crazy high. We had had the incident with John Brown. If you guys are familiar with that, he was the abolitionist who took his sons to Kansas and they basically overthrew the armory there and a big push because Kansas was basically the new battleground for whether it was going to be a free state or a slave state. Anyways, the government had to kill him and all the sons. Then you had the great song, John Brown's body lies a rotten in the grave. John Brown's body lies a rotten in the grave. John Brown's body lies a rotten in the grave. His troops go marching on. If you never knew, but you know that tune, that's where it comes from. So there wasn't just tension in the streets. People today think things have never been worse when you're talking politically in Washington, the halls of Congress, the animosity, the infighting, that it's the worst as it's ever been. Not even close, man. You actually had an incident on the floor of the Senate about 1853, I believe, and a Senator Sumter was actually giving an anti-slavery speech when one of the Southern Senators came down the floor up behind Sumter and proceeded to beat him unconscious with his cane. He beat that son bitch so bad that motherfucker never talked, walked, or shit right again. I'm serious, man. He beat him fucking retarded, man. Oh, that's not a problem. He beat him till he has special needs. And that ain't a, <laughs> he beat that motherfucker handy capable. That's how bad that shit was. So anyways, we are not seeing Congress people beating each other practically to death on the floor of Congress at this point. So I wouldn't say things are as bad as they've ever been. But of course, we don't ever wanna see things get that bad because this preceded the Civil War by only about seven years. So when it gets to that point, that's when the country is just about on the brink. But anyway, the basic issue at that time, of course, was slavery. It had come up with the issues of 5240 or fight the Kansas is it going to be a slave state, free state. So when you actually have the issue of secession come up, 
the argument that the southern states used was basically if you join a club voluntarily and then later on that club for whatever reason changes or you no longer feel like it represents you and your ideals then you should have the right to voluntarily leave that club right so they said that's what we're doing with america we joined a while back and said we're going to try it out now we're saying we don't fucking like it no more you don't like our slaves you don't like our economy what we're doing down here we're gonna fucking pull out well at that time nobody really knew if you could or not so it was going to take this civil war to decide the issue once and for all and really the civil war is the first thing that brought the entire country together as a nation before the civil war if you ask somebody where they were from they were going to say i'm an alabamian i'm a virginian before they would say they were an american if they would even say that at all after the civil war we're all Americans now because a lot of people in the southern states had absolutely nothing in common with the New Yorker you know the Yanks up there but after the Civil War we all had something in common we had all shared a major tragedy together so you finally have the initial states who secede from the Union General Lee who is one of the great generals in the Union Army pulls out and says I'm gonna stick with my state Virginia instead of sticking with the US Army so that was a big blow really the South got almost all of the good generals the North was kind of stuck with the fucking second tier but even given that people in the North were supremely confident that this was going to be a very quick war it would be over fast the first battle of Bull Run you actually had people this is just a few miles outside of Washington and you actually had social elites the rich people in the town who all took the day off went out and put out picnic table spreads up in the hillsides overlooking the battlefield they thought they would see the Union just rout the southern army quick it would be over and actually thought that was gonna be the whole Civil War this one battle the southern states would just surrender and that was gonna be it well that wasn't to be so and the fucking southern army actually ends up routing the union army at one point the union army starts retreating back all these socialites and city fucking people are all out there picnicking see the fucking union soldiers they're like what was that a fucking soldier oh shit they're up running for their fucking lives dude leaving all their fucking baskets and shit behind southern troops run them all the way back to dc fucking stop off eat their picnics and shit I don't know man that's probably where the term eating someone's lunch comes from because they ate the fucking Union Army's lunch that day I'll tell you that and that would actually be the situation for the first couple years of the war man the Union Army would have no luck Lincoln couldn't get anybody to fight McClellan's the head of the Union Army all he keeps writing to Congress we need more money we need more troops we need more fucking supplies we need more training and he just fucking is always saying that they're not ready the army's not ready it's not ready and Lincoln's going crazy so he decides the only general he has who's actually willing to fight and has won a few battles is Grant so he's thinking about appointing Grant to become the general of the entire Union Army and at that point a lot of his aides and the assistants are all mumbling and grumbling Grant is a drunk and to that Lincoln says if that be so find out what whiskey he drinks and send a case to every one of my other generals because at least Grant fights and that motherfuckers worth more to me drunk then all you sons of bitches are worse sober so fucking drink up and get your ass out on the battlefield I mean I'm not saying those were his exact words but that was basically the idea so he puts Grant in charge of the army and fucking Grant gets the shit going man they start battling then you get Sherman with the march to the sea he basically cuts the fucking southern confederate army down the middle and is able to cut the supply lines isolate the east from the west and then you're able to fucking divide and conquer move in you burn down the cities the most hated man in Atlanta all of that so from there everybody pretty much knows how the fucking war ends right are we one country or are we two well we know the answer to that question now so for everybody out there like Texas who's always talking about seceding and shit you ain't going no fucking where we already settled that fucking question we know now exactly what happens because the argument from the north side always was look you didn't join a fucking club there was no club you basically created this thing along with us and when we created this thing it became greater than the sum of its parts and you are not going to rip apart 
of this, uh, you know, apart, I guess, for lack of better words, because I'm fucking high. Anyway, let's take a look at a couple shots of Sherman's March to the Sea, maybe with some oldie time Civil War music, and then I'm gonna take a little intermission break. See you in a sec. <laughs> So, after the Battle of Gettysburg, um, Robert E. Lee surrenders. So, we saved the Union, and of course, everyone knows Lincoln would have a night. He should have stayed home. He goes to the theater. John Wilkes Booth shoots him. And then an interesting little tidbit, when Lincoln is on his deathbed, and his Secretary of War, Edwin McMaster, something like that, his Secretary of War, is there on his deathbed, right at the moment when Lincoln dies. And then it's a famous quote that everyone's heard when he says, now he belongs to the ages. But the interesting thing is, because of course that sounds like, fuck, that was like hella fucking, you know, forward thinking and realizing what Lincoln's importance would be, you know, to future generations. But anyways, in his biography or something, he actually admitted to the fact that at the moment, his actual quote was, now he belongs to the angels. But then later in his memoirs or whatever, he wrote, now he belongs to the ages because he knew that was much more fitting, you know, for Lincoln. But anyways, pretty interesting, fascinating war, fucking bloody, brutal. And like I said, we will never, hopefully never have to do that again to settle an issue like that. So mind your P's and Q's, Texas. Anyway, I'm from, I was born in Corpus Christi. So I can talk, motherfucker. Hope you enjoyed that. Maybe even learned a little bit of something um, give me some requests down in the comments. Love to hear what you guys would like me to talk about next. I got a bunch of ideas already, but I love getting the requests from you guys. If you like these stoned histories, give me a thumbs up. That way I know you guys appreciate them, and I will definitely keep doing them. Other than that, guys, thanks for hanging out for me. <laughs> all right guys Woo! other than that thanks for hanging out with me for a while tonight i appreciate it or i guess at whatever time you happen to be watching this video join me back here again tomorrow i will have something else to talk at you guys about then have a great freaking night or day whatever time it is for you and see you right back here next time oh and thank you so much MIG Vapor for providing me my e-cig that I'm using tonight. If you guys are interested in getting an e-cig for yourself and getting off those damn icky sticks, you know we can never forget about you guys. Use the link below. Go over to the MIG Vapor store and check out some of his stuff. This is his basic e-cig kit. It's a great place to start.